Welcome to Modi Makes. What's good, everybody? My name is Modi. This is Modi Makes, and today we're gonna get real spooky, scary in here because we're gonna make some powerful propaganda art. Propaganda art has been an indispensable political tool forever to brainwash the masses for good and less good purposes. And their success hinges on the image being eye-catching and delivering a distinct and easy to understand feeling or vibe about a specific idea so they can successfully play on your fear. Because of this innate power laced in the imagery of the art form, it's easy to see why why people could be inherently drawn to it. And I am one of those people. I've always found propaganda posters to be fascinating and morbidly beautiful. And ever since I was a child, I've wanted to learn the secret of how to capture raw oppression of the mind in an image and some text. But I'm a much better artist now than I was as a child, so I think I'm ready. As a kid, I was always obsessed with drawing pictures of American soldiers, specifically from World War II and Vietnam. I don't really know what that says about my messed up American boy brain that I found it so interesting, but I have to partially blame it on the movies, TV shows, and video games that were created popularizing specifically those two wars in the public conscious. However, for me, it was really about the aesthetic. The uniforms, the scenery, the candid portraiture of these incredibly intense moments. It primed me to love trying to recreate these powerful images and break apart what made them so powerful so that I could try to create my own without having to copy from existing images. And that's why I was drawn to propaganda art. It showed me all these incredibly talented artists, illustrators, and graphic designers that were able to create images exaggerated in just the perfect ways to invoke a primal reaction from their viewers. This was often for more than dubious purposes, but in a way they were making art for the people. To brainwash them, absolutely. But if you're capable of realizing and ignoring that aspect, there's a lot of beauty and mastery in the composition, the color choices, and the action baked into the images. On top of that, they're just a masterclass in visual communication. Their entire purpose is to deliver a clear message to as many people in the easiest to digest way possible. So I tapped into all this knowledge as best I could to create my own version of an anti-Vietnam War propaganda poster that I've titled Toy Soldier. I still wanted this design to be a Modi Blue Meanies painting in style, but captured that essential essence of a propaganda poster. Luckily, I already use a lot of bold graphic colors and elements in my paintings, and my characters can be fairly creepy and menacing too, which are both very valuable tools for accomplishing this task. Now you've already seen my gaunt, creepy looking soldier character design designed to stand front stage. So here's where the toy soldier part comes in, hence the title. From the very beginning, I knew I wanted a complementary green and red color palette for this design. Using the green for the soldier to make him look like your classic little green man style toy soldier, and the red for the background to make it bright and eye-catching so you'd noticed it posted on the local street corner or hippie draft dodger shirt. Then I'll add a camo pattern to the helmet reminiscent of the Vietnam War era American helmets, but honestly, most of this gets covered up later in shading, so I'm not even sure it was worth it. Speaking of shading, I'll start adding some stippling shading on the top of this exposed baseball cap brim to warm up my hand before adding red edge lighting leaking into all the black inking for dramatic effect. Because I wanted to have the light on our subject hitting from behind and on each side with the main dark shadows running along the center 
center, which I will initially block in with some black stippling to get a very moody, almost graphic novel effect. And to strengthen this effect even more, I'll follow that up with another pass of darker green stippling underneath the black shading, pushing that contrast even further and adding a somewhat smoother gradient from light to dark. While choosing exactly where all the shadows should lie, I wanted to capture not only the three-dimensional form of all these different layers and how they interact with the light, but also the semi-gloss shine of that green plastic we're all familiar with from good old American toys. Nothing says American toys like plastic green soldiers. I chose to make my soldier look like a toy soldier as a parallel to the American military complex treating their soldiers like toys in their chess match against the red menace, threatening their greedy capitalist dreams on the quest for more money and power, forcing people to fight in this war that they didn't really want to be a part of over land that they had no right to, with many feeling left hollowed out and internally devastated by the experience. One thing I've always found striking in the portraits of soldiers from this time is the glimmer of soul shining from the eyes, contrasting the indifference left on their face out of necessity, and I wanted to capture that same feeling by having actual light pouring from the shadow over his eye. Yet at the same time, in the soldier's hand is a white flower that pops from the otherwise monotone design, lit on fire for no other reason than to light the man's cigarette. Referencing the destruction of a symbol of peace and tranquility, and the needless mass destruction of huge swaths of forest and land in search for tiny victories with the blanket napalming strategy employed by the US, all capped by a plume of pink smoke wafting into the air. The pink helps this element stand out and draw your eye while still using the same tones as the background red, which I decided needed to pour over onto the helmet even more to emphasize that dramatic lighting and almost entirely cover up all that camo patterning I did earlier. So now we have our creepy subject character telling his story. And honestly, I could have stopped here and it would have been a fine poster design with some amount of weight and message to it. But this is propaganda art. We have to hit you over the head with the message. And come on, it's not really a propaganda poster without some text. So we'll hammer all this home with the... <laughs> The iconic image of the Vietnam War is American soldiers trudging through the jungles, and as of yet, I don't see any jungle in this design here. So we'll rectify that up real quick by adding a few detail foliage elements into the background, all colored with the same greens as the subject. But to make sure the subject's silhouette doesn't get lost in all these new elements, I'll make sure to put a lot of dark black shading on them to help them hide and have the red rim light of the character pop out in front. Then it's time for the all-important, all-caps shouty text to help the message along, which I'll sketch in here on Procreate to get the general idea of how I want the elements to look and sit in order to work well with the composition, which I'll then send over to my laptop so I can work in a program much better suited for this specific task, known as Adobe Illustrator. Fun fact, I used to create posters for a living back in college and Illustrator was basically the only program we worked in at that business. So I have a special area of expertise for this part here. I chose to go with the text Amen on this design for a couple of reasons. First, it's an impactful four letter word that fits in my composition well and works for the graphic design elements I plan to add. And second, it speaks to the idea of the US and its military committing terrible acts in the name of what they believe to be the greater good as if it were God's work. And conveniently, that greater good just happens to align very well with the US interests, especially as it concerns control and business. After finding a font that I felt had the look I was going for, I expanded the text into objects to edit the font shape and fit it to the style I sketched on Procreate. Once it's in a place I'm happy with, I can export that text as a PNG with no background and 
bring it into Procreate for the final touches to marry this graphic element with the rest of the imagery. I wanted to add texture to the otherwise flat element to work well with the stippling design of the subject and allude to the crumbling ideal of this being for the greater good by literally sketching in broken rocky texture onto the lettering and adding an extra layer of destruction to the image. And with that final detail element finished up, the design is complete and ready for those final shots. Well, there you have it, my peoples. My toy soldier propaganda poster design is complete, and I think it has all the impact and all the message that it needs to be a proper propaganda poster. But let me know what you guys think of the piece down in the comments below. And you know, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a like, that would be fantastic. And if you like me, you like the channel, and you wanna help support me, the number one thing that you can do is to subscribe. I really couldn't thank you enough if you did, it means the world to me. With all that out of the way, and without further ado, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching.